Hello scrappers and planet lovers, Tin Man here with another video. So I recently received several questions from a beginner scrapper and one of their questions to me was where do I find most of my copper? So as you can see behind me, I have a number of examples of copper. What I'd like to do is share some of my top five or six places that I find it, hopefully help you with some tips and tricks and more importantly, help you maximize your profit and get as much out of your scrapping experience as possible. So gonna start right here with these two bags and these copper pieces come in the form of appliance wire. Any type of cords or wire that will plug into an outlet, those are a common item that scrappers will drive by and cut the cords off. Easy money maker. And I do have them in two different bags because they are worth different price. The first bag you see here, the smaller one, this is a higher value. This is what we classify as your 60% appliance wire. And the reason we classify this as 60% is because a scrapyard will look at copper to plastic ratio and copper recovery. Every one of these are individual coated with plastic with copper inside of it. Uh, there are some power cords that you will see. For example, this one right here, you see the copper inside of that. There is only one coating of plastic. This one right here out of a lamp. This too is copper inside of it if I show you the end. So this is a higher value because there is less plastic, more copper recovery. You will also get a lot of wire that comes off of circuit boards inside. But currently this right now in London, Ontario is going for $1.88 a pound. So I definitely want to make sure that I separate, separate it. I keep it in this bag. I also make sure that I use strong bags. These are actually grass seed bags, very heavy, very durable. Um, and when you're adding weight like this back one that's 72 pounds, you definitely want a strong bag so it doesn't break. This wire back here is your lower value, but still a great value. This is your 40% appliance wire. So as you can see, Different examples, that wire, this is out of a dehumidifier, common things like microwaves, vacuum cleaners. Um, this has one outer coating of plastic, three individual strands of wire with coating on it. Because there is two layers of coating, there is less copper in here, more plastic. So this right here is your 40% appliance wire and is still at a great price at $1.07 a pound. So $1.07 a pound, I have 72 pounds of it right here. And this is only one of my three bags that I've been building up for the year. So you definitely will find a lot of power cords or appliance wire and a great money maker. There are some appliance wires like this one. This one I will actually strip open. This is a great one that you will find out of dryers or stoves. So it also has some really nice copper inside of it as well as some nice yellow brass. And I do have a video on different wires. I will put the links down below if you're interested to check those out. But I definitely separate these and strip them because the wire in here is a lot better. It's thicker, so I will strip them down. But you definitely, uh, some wires in my opinion, and again, some people will say that they strip all wire. Uh, it's up to you and availability and time. But I have thought myself in my tests that it is not worth it. So all appliance wire power cords that I have that are not stoves and uh, dryers, I will separate into these two categories and I will leave the coating on. As well, some people will take the brass prongs off. I do cut the brass prongs off. As you can see, these don't have the prongs. I will put them into brass. Some people do take them off or some people will leave them on for the weight. Um, and some people like myself will put them into my brass. It really doesn't make a huge difference in terms of the, the price or the weight, but it's up to the person. But appliance wire, definitely every electronic and appliance out there, you will often see on garbage day, people drive by and just cut the cords off of vacuum cleaners and leave the rest. And that's because of the copper content there. But that moves me over to my second category. Transformers, you can see I have some really nice transformers and they are their own category at a scrapyard. You can get for some of them 15 to 20 cents. Some of the bigger ones like this, if you find these heavy ones out of microwaves 
and they have two spools of copper. You can actually get 54 cents a pound for these. And these are very heavy. Some of the larger ones out of microwaves weigh 10 pounds, some of them are 15 pounds. This one actually weighs 15 pounds, so that is still a good price. But if these are copper, which they will be, these smaller ones here, the copper is gonna give you your number two copper value. And right here in this bag, this is 50 pounds of number two copper that I've gotten from either transformers or copper bearing motors that I will talk about in a second. So you can see there are different types of transformers. Sometimes microwaves, people will pass them up, especially newer models because they believe that they have no longer been uh, uh, manufactured with copper spools. They usually, they think, uh, are now aluminum. And some are, but you definitely want to open up those microwaves and check because even if one of these was copper, at number two copper price, which is right here, $3.50, it is worth it. So the larger transformers, Sometimes you will find on microwaves, these transformers that have the spool of copper, those two are definitely worth the copper, number two copper in there, as well as your little donut. The smaller ones like this, these two have a nice thing of copper, you can see. These come out of different electronics and appliances as well, but showing you the transformers definitely come in different sizes. And there you go, look at these beautiful coils from microwaves. There's three of them and they weigh a lot. As you can see, the weight right here, or the, the value, 50 pounds as I said at $3.50 is an excellent thing, transformers. And again, transformers you will find in different electronics. Microwaves have your larger ones for sure. Copper motors, which is the next one. Copper motors come in all different electronics and appliances. Some great copper out of this. This is a ceiling fan. Look at the nice copper inside of that. I've got a washer here, motor. You'll get dryer motors. You'll get smaller ones for sure, like this. This is out of a dishwasher that has a nice coating. Sometimes you'll find two or three motors. Um, this is a ceiling fan. So different items that I commonly get out of are any electronic, like fans, um, Dishwashers, ceiling fans are a great one for sure. Uh, and as I said, smaller ones, all of these you do want to, to scrap. And definitely you do want to make sure you do the scratch test as well to make sure that this is copper. If I was to scratch these and it revealed a metallic look underneath, it's going to be aluminum. So unfortunately you cannot throw it into your copper. But all of these, once I've scratched them, it is going to be number two copper. Uh, and just to help that beginner scrapper, regardless of the, the shininess of it or the cleanliness of it, it is all number two copper. And that's because all copper wire that is thinner than 16 gauge, which is the thickness of the lead of a pencil, is going to be number two. As well, some of it, for example, has glue on it or coating, but some really good stuff that you will see. And they do also come in small pieces like this. You can see, a little bit of copper still on this motor right here. This comes out of a microwave. Um, as I said, two spools here, very easy to take off. And the great thing about these two is I can also, once I take the copper off, I will throw the metal into my tin and get eight cents for that as well. So I'm losing no money. I'm just gaining money from separating the copper from the motor. Um, again, there are separate categories for copper bearing motors, but in my opinion and experience, way better getting the number two copper price for it. So this bag, as I said, is just from uh, transformers and motors. The next item that I want to talk about that I commonly get uh, copper from are circuit boards. Circuit boards, I often talk about, for example, your copper donuts. You can see there is some beautiful copper there. There's some copper there. Um, I've already talked about, obviously about transformers, but the spools that you will get off of these copper donuts, circuit boards are in almost any electronic appliance now. As I said, when you get items like this, it's all free copper. Um, sometimes uh, your motherboards that come out of your computer towers, you will find some aluminum heat sinks 
that do have copper inside of them as well. There's some copper there. I find tons of uh, computer tower boards and circuit boards. So all of that is number two. Sometimes you will hit the mother load like I did here. This is a heat sink that came out of a computer tower. That is all copper. That is a beautiful piece right there that I will throw into number one or two. Part of this would be number one, um, but I think it's gonna actually, no it won't because there is soldering inside. This would be number two. Um, so another question to address, someone asked me about sheet copper. Where would I put that? That would be in another category, classified as number three copper. So um, sheet copper is number three, and it's about $3.45 a pound. It depends on how much you have. They might put it right in your two, um, but uh, definitely want to sort it separate from your um, next category I'm going to talk about, which is copper wire. But this right here weighs 1.7 pounds. Look how thick that is. So again, sometimes you will find heat sinks that come out of your computer towers that have a really nice circular copper ingot in there with uh, aluminum around it. Um, often talk about heat sinks. Another great item with them is that they are a form of aluminum. So you can see this one has some copper on it. This, I will cut the copper off right here. I put this into number two copper for sure. The rest of this, I may actually just put in, once I take the base off there too, put into a category called copper aluminum radiators. But again, circuit boards, these donuts definitely add up and the availability of them is unbelievable. I definitely will store those and I will put them into my number two bin because again, you see it does add up for sure. The last one for me right here is and again, this is dependent on where you are, but copper wire that I find uh, at construction sites and dumpsters. Luckily, I did ask permission first, so I do not go into the dumpster without asking. There's usually someone on site. I will do it during the day. They have no problem if it's in the garbage because they, they too, either A, don't have the time to take it in themselves, and a lot of times too, they do not want to see it go into the landfill. But you can see right here, I have spools of copper wire. Some of this copper wire is going to be bare bright. This, for example, it is copper wire, uh, Romex wire that I have here. Commonly find um, right here different gauges of wire. So this is all household wire that I have been able to grab out of the dumpsters. Um, little pieces, ends of spools, uh, but an excellent source of copper wire for me. Uh, and as well, once I take these bigger pieces off, you will find common household Romex wire like this. Once I remove this outer coating, look at all of that inside of there. These are the strands that come out of it. I've already taken out the number one or bare bright copper wire of that. But I have right here 41 pounds just of little pieces that I will now further put into my wire stripper and get out the clean copper. If I was to leave this, I could bring this in as my 60% um, appliance wire uh, or wire, uh, so a dollar eighty-eight. But definitely throwing this through my wire stripper, it is very thick, very heavy, and I'm going to get for this bare bright price, which is currently three dollars and ninety-five cents a pound. So it has gone down a little bit, but copper again continues to stay high. So definitely some great wire I have here, which is my common household wire, Romex, as well as different thicker wire like this, different gauge from construction sites. Um, do you want to also mention as well, places, common places for that person, adding on to it, microwaves, one of the common or most common item I find microwaves and some CRT TVs or the old TVs and computer monitors. Some great copper yolks here that have number two copper in them. And I just did a video on copper yolks. Excellent place to find copper. And microwaves, another common item that I will find as well when someone says that they pass up microwaves because they think the transformer is aluminum. There is still great copper inside of that microwave, regardless of the transformer. There is always going to be a magnetron that you see here 
This Magnetron has a very nice copper middle here, and I do have a video showing you how to safely remove that copper. So again, I will add the link in my video, but some great copper there. It always also has a smaller motor like this underneath the microwave turning the plate. So there is some copper inside of that as well. But a lot of people will forget this copper motor, but it's still copper. As well as other items, this motor. Again, this was my uh, cooling fan. Has some beautiful copper as well. So microwaves and TV CRTs and computer monitors excellent source of copper that I will get additional copper from but any electronic and appliance will have a copper motor or a motor so again you have to do a scratch test because some vacuum cleaners have a motor that does have the outer coils aluminum but regardless inside they will still have a nice uh, copper yoke or armed armature if you will the inner part is still copper so definitely worthwhile still but any type of electronic that I have here, ceiling fans, washer, microwave, um, anything. Like I said, this I came, I think this came out of a vacuum cleaner. Transformers, another one, as I said, common, and your appliance wires. So those are my top five. Make sure you do ask permission again if you go to a, a dumpster or a job site. You definitely do not want to be looming around and, you know, being responsible if there's someone else or irresponsible or caught in the act of, you know, stealing wire on site or not asking permission. I do not include on here any um, compressors, but if you have the means of getting compressors safely uh, removed of gas, those motors as well have an excellent source of copper in them. So there are definitely compressors. Uh, and air conditioner units, dehumidifier units that have the copper aluminum radiator. I did not add these in the video. Uh, I do find some, but because you do have to remove the gases inside of those, they are definitely hard to um, process or have to recycle for the copper because it is actually illegal to cut the, the wire to release the gas. But regardless, they still have an excellent appliance wire that you see in that bag. And if you are like me that has a friend that actually can flush them for you, aluminum copper radiators are another excellent source of uh, copper that you can have. So a short video, hopefully that answered those questions. But again, some great copper. This bag, as I said, 50 pounds of number two. I've already started another bag, but that is large part because of my copper wires and transformers. They are in anything and everything as well as circuit boards. Go get that copper. Please comment down below, like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Tin Man out.